Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a special treat. In the studio I have the brand new Serval WS laptop from System76. I'm going to give it a full review. Now real quick I'll move it closer to the camera so you can get a better look. Put <clears throat> some muscle into it. <clears throat> The Linux community has been asking System76 to produce an AMD-based laptop for quite some time now. It's actually one of the most common comments that I see anytime I review any System76 laptop is when are they going to release an AMD laptop? Well, that's what we have right here. The Serval WS laptop is AMD-based. It has an AMD Ryzen CPU inside, which is awesome. And it's a great machine. We're going to take a look at it right now. But for those of you that have been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for System76 to come out with an AMD laptop, you can finally rest because the time has come. It now exists. And this is the result of that effort right here, the Serval WS Workstation Laptop. Now, I've had this laptop in the studio for a little over a week. I've been playing around with it, having some fun. It's been a real treat. So in this video, I'm going to show off the hardware and give you guys my thoughts. Now this machine was provided directly by System76 for the purposes of this review, but as with all of my videos, I reserve full creative freedom in every video that I do on this channel, and this video is no exception. I'm going to give you guys my overall thoughts. I'll tell you what I like, what I don't like, and we'll get a full review of this machine right now. So first of all, this machine has a 1080p 15.6 inch panel with 144 hertz refresh. On the website, it's listed as having a 120 hertz display, but when I look at the settings in GNOME, it reports 144 hertz. The brightness is decent. I'd rate it at about an 8 out of 10 at least. It could be a bit brighter, but at its maximum brightness, I think it's more than adequate. The colors look great and everything is clear. The chassis itself features all the ports that you would probably ever want in a laptop. We have three USB-A ports, we have a USB-C port, and when it comes to external displays we have both mini display port as well as HDMI. We also have an SD card slot as well on the left hand side, so if you do any kind of photography or if you're like me and you're constantly flashing Raspberry Pi SD cards, and you'll be happy to know that you won't have to reach for a USB dongle to do that. You can insert a micro SD card directly into the machine. In regards to the keyboard, it's virtually the exact same keyboard that's being used with several of the System76 laptops in the lineup today. Well, at least to me, it looks exactly the same. It feels exactly the same. And I have to assume that it is. And I'm comparing it against the Gazelle and the Oryx Pro, for example. It appears to be the exact same keyboard as those models, and that's a good thing because it's a decent keyboard. I really like this one a lot. It's very comfortable to type on, and it's actually one of my favorites. The Lemur Pro is somewhat of an outlier because that machine has a completely different keyboard than most of them, and that keyboard is decent too. But at this point, the majority of the System76 laptops all have virtually the same keyboard. And just like the others, this one features a backlight, and not just any backlight, you can actually customize the colors so you can make the backlight feature your favorite color, which is pretty cool. The trackpad on this model is pretty good. I personally prefer the trackpad of the Oryx Pro, but they're both good, and which one you like better is just a matter of preference. The Oryx Pro trackpad is buttery smooth and slippery. The Serval trackpad has more of a standard trackpad feel, and it also has physical buttons just like the Oryx Pro, so if you want, you can completely disable tap to click if you don't like it and just use the physical buttons. So the choice is yours. But when it comes to the trackpad, I have no complaints whatsoever. Now the build quality is very solid. It's a bit on the heavy side, but I think that's to be expected when you are using a workstation class laptop. So yeah, while it might be a bit heavier, it's really not a problem depending on what your use case is. You won't want to travel with this machine but I think it's fine for the use case that this model was intended for. The chassis overall just feels very firm and solid. And it even feels like it can take a bit of abuse, but I'm not really in a hurry to try to do a drop test on this machine, but it really does feel like this machine can take a little bit of a licking. And this is a solid build. I have no complaints about the chassis at all. 
Also, I really like the lid on this model. It has some glowing symbols on each side of the screen that just make it look futuristic. A few other models that System76 has produced also has the same effect. The new Gazelle, for example, which I've also reviewed, has pretty much the same thing. So I really like the futuristic look of this machine. I think that's pretty cool. So let's talk about the sound quality. During my review of the Oryx Pro, which I absolutely loved, one of my complaints was the sound quality. It wasn't the worst sound quality that I've ever heard on a laptop, but the speakers just sounded very tinny to me, and that was a bit of a concern. Now the speakers on this model are not going to win any awards either. They still sound like your average laptop speakers, but they don't sound as bad as the Oryx Pro. In fact, it's a bit of an improvement actually. You'll still notice some tinniness if you turn it up too loud, if you blast it. But I listened to some music. I've also listened to some other YouTube videos on this machine. And actually, it sounds fine. It's not going to be the greatest thing you've ever heard. But I don't feel like it's going to be the worst either. I do feel that it is a step up from the Oryx Pro. And when it comes to the GPU, some of you might be disappointed that it doesn't have an AMD GPU to match the AMD CPU. With this model, you get a choice between the GTX 1660 Ti or the RTX 2070. The card is pretty good and the performance with gaming is actually great. For some reason, I couldn't get Doom Eternal to run on this machine like I did with the Oryx Pro, but I don't fault this machine for that because Doom Eternal is actually not a supported game, so on the Oryx Pro I actually had to force it to get it to work. So I'm not going to fault this machine for that, but I wasn't able to get that to run. So the next best thing that I had to run on this machine was Doom from 2016, and that actually ran very well at a very high frame rate. So I'm not really able to compare this machine against the Oryx Pro as much as I would like to because Doom 2016 of course is not going to push the system as hard as Doom Eternal would be able to push it and Doom Eternal was the focus of my Oryx Pro review but I will say that the frame rate is very high it's very smooth so if gaming is something that you want to do I don't feel like you're going to have any complaints there at all. The review unit that I was provided was specced out with an RTX 2070 in case you were curious. Now the downside in the GPU department is that the Oryx Pro can be configured with up to an RTX 2080 Super, but this servo laptop maxes out at a RTX 2070, so that is a bit of a drop. However, depending on which CPU you configure the servo with, the CPU will outperform the Oryx Pro, so if you're playing a game on the Oryx Pro and the CPU is a bottleneck, then you'll be less likely to run into a problem like that on the servo. The Oryx Pro actually features switchable graphics, but the servo doesn't. So essentially, you are using the NVIDIA GPU all the time. So what that means is that you might potentially take a hit when it comes to battery life, but battery life isn't really the focus here, so that's forgivable. And not having switchable graphics might actually be a good thing depending on your use case. With the Oryx Pro, you had to reboot the laptop into a different GPU mode in order to use external displays. But with this machine, since you actually are always in NVIDIA mode, that's not even something that's going to happen, so your external display ports will always work since there's no specific mode that you need to be in. Also, when it comes to modes, you can actually switch to a different battery mode, which might give you a little bit more battery life, but in my tests, I haven't really found much of a difference. For me, the battery lasts about two to two and a half hours or so, and that's with the screen brightness cranked all the way up, so you might actually be able to squeeze a bit more out of it. But again, if battery life is your primary concern, then this might not be the laptop you want to go with because essentially this is a desktop replacement. This is a workstation. This is for those of you that want a really powerful CPU to get some work done. Now the major talking point with this model is easily going to be the fact that it ships with an AMD CPU. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of people have been asking System76 for a laptop with an AMD CPU and the time has come, that's exactly what we have here. And this review unit was specced out with an AMD Ryzen 9 Pro 3900 CPU and it is very fast. It's probably the fastest CPU that I've ever used in a laptop. This particular CPU has 12 cores and 24 threads so it can definitely cut through a workload very easily and I absolutely love this CPU. And this laptop is as powerful as virtualization servers were not that long ago. If you compare the 3900 to the fastest CPU that you can get on the Oryx, it's actually faster and I feel the difference as I use the machine. Its performance is superb. 
Now with that performance comes a little bit of a price because I find that the fan is almost always on and whether or not that bothers you actually depends on your environment. I mean, I'm recording videos in a studio, so I really want everything to be silent, and I'm going to hear things better than the average person might given my environment, but I do always hear the fan in the background. Admittedly, when the machine is idle, it's really not that loud. I mean, you can actually forget that the fan is on. It's not going to be distracting or anything like that. And if the fan noise is actually something that bothers you, that might be a concern if that's something you're sensitive to. But when you do some actual work, you'll definitely hear the fan. Now, to be fair, the fan on this model is not as loud as the Oryx. When you get the Oryx Pro going, when it's crunching a major workload, I mean, that thing sounds like a jet engine that can take off. But the Oryx Pro, you only hear the fan when you're doing something that really needs the power and really means that the fan should be on. Whereas this model, the fan is quieter, but it's always on. So that might not be a problem for you unless you are, you know, like me recording videos or using it in a studio or using it in a library or something like that. So that might not be something that matters, but it is something to keep in mind. This is not a silent machine. You definitely will hear the fan. So this laptop is a bit on the heavy side. I joked around at the beginning of the video. I was over exaggerating a bit. The heaviness isn't really that bad, but it is something to keep in mind if you travel a lot. This isn't a laptop that you'll want to have in your bag if you're walking around airports all the time. It's not an ultra portable. It's a desktop replacement. So the weight is to be expected because again, this is a workstation class laptop and it's intended to replace your desktop. So I like to think of this as a portable desktop with a built-in UPS. Now the most obvious comparison to make is against the Oryx Pro. I reviewed the Oryx Pro in my most recent review before this one and I found that it's the best 15-inch laptop that System76 has ever produced. With the Serval, we have yet another contender for the 15.6-inch trophy, and this time with a very fast AMD CPU. Honestly, my personal opinion is that I still think the Oryx Pro is the best even after using the Serval, but it all depends on your use case and what you're actually in the market for. The CPU in the Serval is superior to the Oryx Pro, so if your focus is solely on CPU performance, then the Serval is definitely the way to go. If GPU performance is what you're after, then the Oryx Pro is actually something that you might want to consider instead. The fan on the Oryx is quieter most of the time, so if you're going to be using a laptop in a more quiet environment, I think the Oryx is a better fit. But then again, when it comes to the Oryx, that fan can actually get louder than the Serval when it's doing some major crunching, so the differences almost make them even. All in all, I really enjoyed using the Serval in the studio and checking it out. I definitely recommend it if it fits your use case. If you're looking for a 15.6 inch laptop, then there are several possibilities. The Serval is great for those of you wanting a mobile workstation with an AMD CPU. The Oryx Pro may be a better fit for gamers, but that's open to debate if you run into a situation where the CPU on the Oryx actually becomes a bottleneck for the game that you're running, but they're both great machines. Overall, the Serval has great build quality, has a really good display, I love the keyboard, the trackpad is great as well, and it's fast as heck. So if you want a machine that can basically keep up with your workload, then I really think that the Serval is a great fit. Ultimately, which laptop you go with will depend on your individual use case, your environment, things like that. But I don't really see any problems with the Serval workstation laptop. I mean, yeah, the fan can be annoying at times, but given the intended use case, that probably shouldn't be a problem. And overall, I really enjoyed my time with this machine. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I have some awesome videos coming, so stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and I will see you in the next video.